Hello friends, this is Dr. Kasmi and today I'm going to talk about uh, how COVID-19 pandemic has actually behaved in its actuality, how it has spread around the world and I will be using some of the mathematical notations and mathematical graphs to actually um, explain how the actual spread uh, has occurred around the globe. Now, uh, I have been asked uh, by many people uh, in response to my previous videos on this subject that, uh, you know, in the beginning we were told that uh, this is, is a very dangerous situation and it's probably going to spread all over the world in a very short period of time. Uh, millions of people would be affected. But now uh, the data from all over the world is showing that somehow there has been brakes supplied on the spread of this pandemic. So all those countries, whether there was a strict lockdown or no lockdowns or partial lockdowns, we are eventually seeing a flattening of the curve. And in some cases, the, the spread is actually steadily going down. So many people have asked that, like, if it was an exponential growth, then how comes that breaks have been applied on the spread of this pandemic, uh, despite the fact that we do not have an effective treatment, we do not have an effective vaccine, and still somehow um, invisibly, uh, you know, the, the pandemic has slowed down. So I will take this opportunity to actually explain this phenomenon to you uh, using some of the mathematical graphs. Now, before I start, I just need to tell you that uh, there is difference between the mathematical modeling and the actual behavior of any infectious disease, whether it goes to an epidemic proportions or pandemic proportions. And the reason for that is that, you know, when we are doing mathematical modelings, we make certain assumptions. And most of these assumptions are oversimplified versions of the actual reality. Ground realities are very different. Uh, if you see, there are many factors uh, involved in spread of uh, an epidemic or a pandemic. Uh, population genetics, environment, weather, heterogeneity of the population, racial characteristics, uh, the advancement or otherwise of the healthcare systems to respond to these pandemics, information system, and so on and so forth. There are so many things that actually have a role which would determine how quickly a disease spreads in the community. Um, now, when this uh, pandemic started, um, as there was a sort of a scale in the beginning that probably it would spread to magnanimous proportions and probably the whole world population would be affected. It didn't happen actually that way. Uh, so very simplified uh, answer to that is number one is that the population is always heterogeneous. Remember, if a new infection spreads in the population and that population never had uh, prior exposure to that, theoretically or mathematically, everybody's susceptible. So mathematicians would say, well, there is 100% uh, susceptibility of the population. But uh, in reality, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't work that way. What happens is because of the heterogeneity of the population, there is always a vulnerable segment of the population, which we call as super spreaders. So these are the people who would be early affected in the course of an epidemic or pandemic. These are the ones who catch the disease. These are the ones who are quickly spreading it. And these are the ones who are the first to be affected. And then the wave spread. And then there is another chunk in the population which we call as uh, um, less spreaders or population which is less vulnerable. This pop segment of the population because of its age or racial characteristics or different other characteristics so which are beyond the scope of this lecture. Probably I need a whole day to, dis to describe those things. Based on those factors, that segment of the population does not uh, spread the disease to the extent that the super spreaders they do. So once the super spreaders are affected, and as I said, that that would happen in the early uh, course of the pandemic, you would see that the uh, there's an exponential rise and obviously there's a scare because many people are affected. But once this chunk of population has been infected, either it becomes immune or is subtracted from the population because of, uh, of the deaths, then the rest of the population is basically a bit resistant to the spread of it. So you will see a slowdown of any epidemic and pandemic after a period of time when the super spreaders have been affected or have been effectively subtracted for the, from the population. There are so many other factors as well, and I would take uh, this opportunity to explain it with the help of uh, the mathematical graph. So I would start with this um, 
graph and uh, if you see this is a mathematical graph uh, and it is showing an exponential growth on a linear scale so if you see we've got two axes i've got the x-axis on which you can see the days 20 uh, 10 20 30 40 and 50 and then on the y-axis you have the number of people affected and you can see that it's arithmetically adds 100 200 300 400 500 up to 700 so let's say there is a disease in which every person infects every two other people and then what it means that one leads to two, two leads to four, four leads to eight, eight leads to 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on and so forth. So that is exponential growth. So what is happening, if you plot it on this, uh, this graph, you will see this green line. So what are you seeing is that there is a sudden sharp rise and then it grows up, it almost becomes um, a straight line. And let's say if there's no end to it, then probably the whole world population would be affected the way it spreads. In almost in, in almost like close to a vertical line now this is what happens uh, in theoretically on a linear scale so we are talking about the linear scale now if i draw the same graph on a logarithmic scale uh, then you would see that if i draw here now here you can see again on the x-axis we have the same number of days 10 20 30 40 and 50 so on and so forth and on the y-axis then we have got the number of people affected but instead now of like 100 200 we have got a logarithmic scale of 10 so the first 10 then you know it increases with the factor of 10 so 10 100 1000 10,000 uh, 100,000 and then 1 billion so if we draw the same exponential curve on a logarithmic scale, you will see that we get a straight line. And this straight line increases, 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 and goes on and on and on till theoretically the whole world population is affected. And you get a straight line because we are actually not dealing with uh, the, uh, the, the actual number of cases, rather we are seeing it on a logarithmic scale. Now, so this is exponential growth on a log scale. So theoretically, you would get a green line, but actually the studies of all the pandemics, whether that was the uh, Spanish flu of 1918, uh, whether that was a Hong Kong flu of 1957, uh, that was the, uh, whether that was the H1N1 of 2009, we have seen actually that the pandemics actually behave in the way that is actually described by this yellow line. So you get a sort of a, log a logarithmic increase in the number of cases till it reaches a plateau and this plateau is irrespective of whether you have got a public health system in place with or without that so what does it mean it simply means that something actually applies the brakes on the spread of the disease there are many factors for that and um, the best explanation given for this is is by the what we call as the Gomp Gompertz curve. Now, Gompertz curve is named after the, um, the the name of the person who actually described this mathematical function uh, back in uh, I think it was 1825. So he described uh, this uh, mathematical uh, uh, sort of a uh, relationship between the logarithmic scale of number of people affected and the time and how uh, these things behave over a period of time and these if you look at the gompertz curves the gompertz curves actually goes in a little bit of a sigmoid fashion if you look at the green line over here so it's increasing it's not actually completely straight because if we look at the change in the number and that, that is denoted by the blue line you'll see that the blue line is going in a slightly negative direction so what does it mean it simply means right from the moment that the first person was affected and the disease started growing exponentially there was something which applied breaks so that's why you are seeing that the unit change is slowly decreasing on the other way you are seeing an exponential rise but then as the factor is being multiplied the number is actually decreasing which is actually um, uh, denoted by this Gompertz constant and you'll see that actually describe the slope of the line so uh, um, higher the number the more steep would be the slope so let's say if it is going in a sigmoid fashion it reaches um, a, a, a sort of a ceiling at, at after which it plateaus off and again this would be with or without any public health system or public health measures in place and we see with this blue line which is the change in the number of cases slowly and gradually so you see a very slow decrease in unit change number of cases 
And as then the time proceeds, then there is a sharp decline. So the number of cases would gradually reduce. And on the red line, you can see the number of infected cases. So the number of infected cases obviously rises over a period of time where it reaches the peak. Peak is where we will get the highest number of cases at any given point in time. That's very important. This is not the total number of cases. This is the maximum number of cases that you will get in one point in time. After that and before that, you're also getting cases. But again, as I said, the number of cases per unit time would be less on both sides. So over the, after that, before that and after that, what happens is that there has been a gradual decline. So this would be the highest number. And after that, it will start uh, declining in number. But again, as you see, it's not touching the baseline. It gradually goes down and it will reach uh, what we call as a steady state. So a steady state is an equilibrium state where you will see the number of cases would still be there in the population. It might be sporadic, it might be endemic. The total number of uh, cases would reach a ceiling, as I said, and would be maintained over there as people are either getting recovered, new people are getting infected. So the, the ceiling is still reached and the unit is actually decreasing till it reaches down and again reaches a steady state. So this is actually the, how the Compert's curve describes uh, the initial pandemic. And it's more natural because it's more close to the reality. And this is how the COVID-19 has actually behaved in real life. So we are seeing whether uh, those countries which had strict lockdowns or whether those had semi-lockdowns, we are seeing that the number of cases have reached a plateau and there's been a steady decline. Yes, again, because of the uh, geographical variation, there are certain countries which are still on the left side of this, so they're still seeing a number, a rise in the number of cases like is happening in the Americas, in the Latin Americas, but for the rest of the pop of, of the world, which actually saw an uh, earlier increase, now the numbers have uh, steadied and they are actually going down. As I said, the best uh, mathematical graph to actually explain all this is Gompert's curve. So Gompert's curve is actually telling that somehow the disease by itself, the nature itself is kind enough that it applies breaks. And why it happens is I would try to explain it with the help of a simplified graph. So if you see, um, let's say this is the uh, population. And in this population, let's say this is the index case denoted by the red uh, um, circle, which is affected. So let's say this person affects two other people and then they start on effective other people. So two to four, four to six and so on and so forth. You will be seeing that number of people are getting affected. And if we, you see, if, if we follow that initial um, exponential graph, probably uh, we would say that, okay, fine, it would increase increase and increase till the whole population. But let's say if, if this is the uh, population, let's say it's growing and it's reaching. As I now, if you look at this area, these people are so much affected that they cannot affect the rest of the population because there are not in, enough people around it. Unless and until somebody from this population goes into, a, let's say, another segment of population which was not affected and then it will again grow exponentially in that. But let's say for some reason, if this is a close population, we'll get a number of cases and after that it won't spread because there's not enough people surrounding which would be affected. And this is what actually happens in pandemic. Like for example, in COVID, in case of COVID-19, it mostly affected the senior population, the people who were above 70 years of age. And again, there was reason for that. More ACE2 expression um, in their cells, comorbidities, blah, 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 due to which, and again, you know, there, there was high fatality rate. And once that people, you know, when there was a super spread, they would start spreading it to people of their own um, age groups. And once either they died or recovered, there was not enough surrounding them who could be, you know, where, where the infection could be passed on. So we are now seeing a steady decline in the number of cases. So there is a lot of difference in the mathematical modeling and how the pandemics actually behave. And that's one of the reasons that most of uh, the epidemiologists, uh, they are actually criticizing the Imperial uh, College London Report 9, because that was the report which changed the, um, the, the sort of public health response, global response to this pandemic. So there was more strict lockdowns, school closures, closure of the businesses, whether that was in Europe or that was in the Northern American continent. And that led to huge economic losses. Uh, we don't know how long would it uh, take to 
economically recover from this meltdown but people are saying that probably it would take uh, years because i think it's, it's uh, going to be the beginning of a recession because the economic uh, damage has been so uh, worldwide uh, but the this this report which was actually which is actually responsible for all this that was based on a mathematical uh, model and that model used simple linear exponential growth graphs to depict how this pandemic would behave but now again time has told us that that was totally wrong the way that that forecasting was totally wrong actually the, nothing of that sort happened uh, we see that now the it has plateaued and steadily going down so in many countries life is coming back gradually to normalcy so that's why we say that uh, simple linear uh, or sigmoid curves are not enough to model pandemics we have to see something which is close uh, to reality and um, in my limited knowledge as far as i know of like you know the knowledge that i have got of public health and epidemiology and a little bit of biostatistics i think gompert's curve is uh, the best way to describe because this is the mo I mean, I, I, i'm not saying that this is 100 percent perfect but this, this is something which is very close to the reality this is something which is actually describing what we are seeing at the moment so we are seeing a steady decline in the number of cases, and that can be exactly explained by, by Gompertz curves. So Gompertz curves, as I said, that say that naturally nature is kind enough to apply breaks, and that is you know based on different, as I said, population genetics, um, heterogeneity of the population, racial characteristics, um, environment, uh, the, the, the robustness of the health system, so on and so forth. So again, to summarize all this thing, just wanted to tell you, that the way uh, mathematical modeling is done is quite different from the actual reality and the only mathematical model that can describe uh, the real behavior of pandemic in a real world is what we call as Gompert curves or Gompert graphing uh, which uh, most of the mathematicians they know but this is something uh, which can be used in public health system and which is very close to reality. So I hope I have tried my best to explain this uh, complicated phenomenon in a very short video. Uh, but if you think things are not clear to you, you can um, uh, put a comment uh, below uh, in the comment section. You can ask me or uh, uh, if you want more videos on that one, explanatory videos, I can do that for you as well. You can just simply ask me whatever is not clear to you and I will try my level best to explain all this to you. So have a good day. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay healthy. Bye-bye.